Hey guys, welcome again. Uh, thank you for joining uh, Ziba. Uh, so we have Ziba Sultan, Dr. Ziba Sultan, who's joining us today. Uh, who the reason she is here is uh, she decided to uh, from engineering she has moved into uh, being a doctor, and uh, she she has done a lot of certifications, a lot of achievements. Um, you know, she's talented. She she is into. I mean, it's very difficult, Ziba. I think it is easier for you to describe what all you've done. And one of the reason is uh, she has promised me that she will take care of my hairstyle. That's one of the reasons she is here. Uh, but good passion, and you know, I think I cannot, uh, you know, uh, pronounce those uh, terminologies uh, which you have covered. So maybe it would be good if you can give an introduction. But real good passion. Uh, I am really surprised at this particular age. I mean, you you look like a. You know, still a college college going girl. So, how did you accomplish so many achievements, so many certifications, and you know, so many success stories? I mean, it's not that you you just started this now. Yeah, I think in the last four years, I've seen some of the success stories which are there, which you portrayed, are really good. So, yeah, Ziva, can you can you talk about yourself, introduce yourself to our friends, new friends, so that uh, we get to know you well. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, definitely. Uh, well, first, uh, I would definitely thank you for uh, you know giving me the opportunity. I'm not a very digital kind of a person. Never done a live in my uh, life, so thank you for the opportunity. And I've seen you interview such wonderful uh, people out here on this platform that I feel privileged that uh, you know just to be here with you. So, um, like, if you, um, I'm uh, for everyone. Hi. I am uh, Dr. Zeba Sultan, and uh, my, uh, I mean, like, I have done my graduation in IT first. So I completed my IT, then I did my MBA in marketing simultaneously. I was working as a business analyst in Mass Tech for uh, a brief period of two years. Uh, mm -hmm. That time, I realized that I want to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what to get into because every field was very saturated, and I was not very interested in IT. IT was something that um, you know, I eventually got into because my sister was an engineer and my father wanted me to be an engineer. So he was mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, you should be into IT. So um, that was a, that wasn't even a choice that was given to me. But when I uh, told my father that I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to do a business, he was like, uh, we don't come from a business family and uh, I'm not going to fund anything. Like, don't even expect me to put money into anything. Kuch bhi karo. Like, okay, don't do anything. Like, do anything, but don't ask for money. Okay. So I was like, okay. And uh, with a career of only two years, uh, you know, I had not, uh, you know, accumulated enough money or something like that. But um, I chanced upon aromatherapy. Now, it was uh, something that was, I was very lucky um, because... Um, it, it wasn't a very conscious decision uh, to get into aromatherapy. My sister was pregnant at that time and uh, she had uh, come with a small two-year-old uh, to Mumbai. She was settled in UAE. So she had these skin infections which were so bad that we tried all allopathy medications for it and you know nothing was happening. She started crying one day and she said, Zeba, uh, like, do anything but uh, you know, just cure this thing. So okay. I was like, uh, okay, fine. And I started doing research. Like, is, are there any other medications uh, which, you know, um, you know, help with, uh, you know, these skin infections and everything? And I chanced upon aromatherapy. And mm -hmm. uh, I fortunately met a person who was actually uh, into aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gave me a certain uh, gel uh, cream. She's a practicing aromatherapist. So uh, she was like, apply this, uh, she'll, she'll be good. So mm -hmm. I came back with that formulation and, and uh, magically after four days, uh, the child had nothing, like all the uh, bumps were gone, the inflammation was gone and she was uh, like, fine. And I was like, why is this, if this works so well, why is it not everywhere? Why are people not educated about essential oils and, you know, aromatherapy, no side effects, no nothing. And, you know, uh, this can be uh, something that, you know, a lot of people can adopt. So there the journey started. I started with aromatherapy. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, being uh, like, I just left whatever I was doing, and I completely uh, changed my focus and went and learned aroma therapy. Different, different sources. I did it from for quite a few organizations. I went to UAE also to, uh, you know, get a hang of, uh, you know, this. The only unfortunate part is that there is no thorough research on it. There are no big institutes doing, uh, you know, research on essential oils. Or so there is, uh, you know, of course in Europe there is, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, in india in general over here we don't have uh, any uh, you know degree programs or anything where you know as a uh, aroma therapy is uh, uh, thought or you know you could uh, probably get channelized and use it use it at, as medicine so whenever people hear about aroma therapy they think that you know you can do massage therapy massage yeah massage therapy. Yeah. massage hoga yeah. yeah that will be something like that but if i tell you you know essential oils can actually cure your stds uh, can cure your urinary tract infections can cause your gas mm-hmm. and acidity and they'll be like really and you know that that kind of a look like application se ho jayega kya even if you're not ingesting it will it really work so there is no awareness i completed my course and my first clinic was an aroma therapy clinic I opened the clinic and it was a huge flop uh, because uh, uh, nobody could understand what I was doing. Yeah, people were not un- uh, understanding. They were. Uh, I used to get some very weird calls. So, will you do massages and will you do this? Uh, and you know, it was not in a very good way. So mm-hmm. I realized, oh, uh, maybe this is not sufficient. Then I went into PG diploma in dietetics and nutrition. I was like, you know, this would give me a better, uh, you know, uh, hold where I could say that I'm also taking care of your diet and then introduce aroma therapy with, along with it. So I did my PG diploma in dietetics and nutrition. Uh, but then I realized, oh, this is also not enough. I will need to, you know, upgrade myself a little more. So I got into cosmetology. Uh, hair trichology and mm-hmm. obesity management from Tulip International. Uh, these are certification diploma courses. Uh, of course, uh, you know it is very comprehensive. Uh, they teach us uh, teach us about how to use uh, like you know derma rollers for your skin, mm-hmm. uh, like you know and all all those cosme- non invasive cosmetic therapies like uh, derma rollers, uh, microdermabrasion, uh, chemical peels. Then you know I had an array. Okay, I could treat the skin. I could treat the hair. I could give diets. with aroma therapy included in it so if i'm doing a derma roller i will use my essential oils to put in the skin so my serums were you know made by myself so it started off like that so the serums were made by myself and i created my own brand of uh, like uh, my own brand of medications like uh, face washes shampoos mm-hmm. face creams mm-hmm. so belaza came into picture and uh, then one thing led to another to another so i completed so yes uh, right now i am an aroma therapist mm-hmm. i'm a cosmetologist i'm a trichologist i am a nutritionist and uh, i am also trained in zumba so i i love uh, uh, you know uh, physical fitness and i really propagate that you know a person should do exercise so the fun form of exercise that i really liked was zumba so i got myself a zin certification and uh, I don't teach Zumba, but I do Zumba, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes it's like for a fun session with my clients. I'll be like, okay, come on, I do have a certification, so I'll be like there sure. and uh, have fun along with them. So I'm also a Zumba instructor, and I'm a diabetes educator, and I do cupping therapy as well. So cupping therapy is where you know you do wet cupping and dry cupping and uh, silicone cupping. Cupping is where you uh, you know put vacuum cups, and mm-hmm. wet cupping is where you put blades and remove the deoxygenated renal blood. Uh, from the body yeah so i specialize in a lot of alternate therapies no allopathy uh, try something uh, different so if you have a pain go in for uh, you know a hijama or wet cupping or something like that or if you have uh, you know a infection uh, try a sitz bath with aroma therapy so yes i uh, you know got into this and then my entire field of study from it it changed to being somebody who was solving problems i was mm-hmm. working in a hospital for a brief uh, period of time and i realized that my solutions were working for people so uh, when it starts working you start having a name so it started going around like yeah it started going around where they said that oh she's doing a great job you know people are losing weight people are getting better reports are getting better she does she, she doesn't give you know side effects nahi hote hai no allopathy and uh, one thing led to another then to another then to another and eventually now i have two clinics 
but i started off really like very 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 small like in the house hmm. with all the experimentations and everything so bachpan mein kya kiya tha na ye sabhi what ye bach bachpan mein shuru kar diya tha na ye sabhi karna <laughs> yeah i i used to work for 18 18 hours so i i'm i have also been a faculty in whistling woods international so i've done so hmm. much of uh, you know uh, hard work you know i used to teach because again funding uh, was something that i didn't have so i used to teach so i have thought coding i used to teach uh, bba and bsc film making students english literature and uh, business communication i uh, i have uh, done like hosting i used to host uh, i used to sing like i am also a singer like i am trained a little in western vocals so oh. i used to sing yeah i i did everything in my spectrum to earn money I did uh, freelancing. I wrote uh, speeches for you know relevant personalities, and I'm also an international level Scrabble player. So I did everything. <laughs> your your dad should be so proud. I have done a good job. He has not given any money. See, he is able to achieve so many things just because he yeah. will, you know, give you money or invest in your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I I don't know. You know, it's a very funny thing. So it's like um, it's called as Aap Kamai versus Bap Kamai. <laughs> 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 so yeah i mean like when it is aap kamai i keep telling this to a lot of people males females anybody it's like when it is aap kamai you realize the importance of it you work so hard right. for it right. so hard for it that even when i'm speaking right now i i you know i just imagine that uh, you know it's been a very difficult journey like 18 19 20 20 hours So yeah, I used to nearly sleep for like four hours, and you know, I used to be on my scooty everywhere from here to there, and yeah, it's it's been like this journey is something that everybody wanted to know. Like, how did you make a transition? I was like, yeah, this is how I made a transition from being the, an IT professional, like a business analyst in a multinational company, to becoming yeah. an entrepreneur. So yes, uh, Belaza Health and Beauty Services is my venture. and it is an msme which is recognized by the government so it is uh, something that yeah so you're getting <laughs> from uh, mr modi nowadays so <laughs> yeah 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 i'm expecting a loan package <laughs> <laughs> good so so it it's not only a journey of an engineer or the business analyst you know uh, becoming a doctor and you know doing multiple uh, journeys in doctorate of alternate uh, medicine but it's also about a uh, you know entrepreneur women entrepreneur who's not given up tried everything to make uh, you know make that success you know tried businesses which failed you know like uh, aromatherapy clinic which failed and now you you know you have two clinics which you are managing at this particular age so which is yeah. which is just too good तो मतलब जब ना कॉलेजेस उसमें जाते हो टू पीपल ट्रीट दैट ये कहां से आ गए मतलब छोटी बच्ची है व्हाई इज शी हियर टू यू नो टॉक अबाउट समथिंग अह इनिशियली देयर वाज लाइक यू नो लाइक आई यूज्ड टू गो एंड आई हैड अ स्टाफ लाइक आई हैव अ स्टाफ व्हिच हैज अ लिटिल यू नो पीपल हु आर एल्डर टू मी आल्सो सो समटाइम्स पीपल यूज्ड टू गेट कंफ्यूज्ड लाइक यू नो शी लुक्स लाइक यू नो शी समथिंग बट इज द शी हैज एक्सपीरियंस like people yeah. used to uh, like you know go around like okay you know consult uh, you know dr zeba and you know people used to come and say oh uh, you dr zeba and i i was like <laughs> yeah uh, i am dr zeba and uh, you know there is always this uh, you know um, an image in your mind when you are talking about somebody who's practicing and you know who's managing they should have this look Mm-hmm. like you know it's be with a yeah, yeah, bag so you know i i do wear i do has spectacles but yeah it's like you know they want that aura that a thing that uh, you know um it was a challenge at first but uh, eventually people uh, you know got used to it and uh, you know uh, like i've said you know it's aap kamai so there's so much of hard work that is gone that there is a lot of passion that is involved so for each patient i will go that extra step to see that you know this person is uh, definitely coming out of it and when you do a good job Uh, you get rewarded you would you definitely do so i was i was very lucky i was very lucky because i got good clients i got mm-hmm. good results and uh, the kind of uh, hard work that i put in was appreciated by you know the people that i was involved with 
so yeah, my clients are looking that's what, look for. that's what clients look for you know it's not about money you know but money you know once they pay a fee and you know spend time put those efforts whatever you're suggesting once they see results they will definitely be happy and you know recommend you for further more clients and that that's really important yes sir. and uh, word of mouth worked wonders you know i did i i have a good online portfolio there's i, I built an online company but uh, the best marketing is when you know a person who has experienced uh, you know you has gone around and told other people that you know she's doing a good job you should try her out and uh, it, it's been phenomenal getting invited at events where you know you are supposed to speak and it all comes from the heart like it is not rehearsed it is not uh, you know something that i have to you know uh, look at a script and do it it's it's like it's very natural for me because so much of hard work you've done so much of studies so you you know you know it is random koi question bhi aayega so you know that ha this is something that i can deal with so yeah it, it, it's a, it's a nice thing like uh, i i love being in this profession is because you see lives changing out mm-hmm. here uh, you see women coming and saying thank you for uh, you know building that confidence in me i feel good i look great and uh, i mean like it was also a very high paying job uh, mm-hmm. this is obviously uh, like you know because it's an entrepreneurship you know you have to start from the you know bottom and you know i've seen life which is very difficult but uh, i would never trade this this is this is really really nice you know so to bring that smile on someone's face to help uh, you know with uh, curing somebody and you know to give them that one bleak you know thing called hope okay okay main theek ho jaungi so yeah and uh, people have conceived you know people who had gone for fertility mm-hmm. treatments and bahut simple hota hai you know change your lifestyle uh, do a little exercise Uh, lose a little weight, make yourself fertile from within, and uh, you know they've conceived and they've come with their yeah, children yeah. and they've told me you know thank you so much, and uh, it's just it's like you know you feel so overwhelmed. Of course, I don't take the credit. I believe in the divine power that you know they have been blessed with it, but uh, to help them with that process and you know for them to go through coming back to give you that credit, it is incredible. This is incredible. Cool. So. Ziba, let's let's get on to knowing you well. So you're ready for the rapid fire questions? Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first question, you know, be, being from, uh, you know, I'm assuming, you know, from a religious background, you know, uh, was that at any time a challenge from your parents or you know family members to get into business and try new things? Uh. see i i i yeah it was actually let me just put it like that uh, being a, a you know a muslim you know and not just a muslim you know a conservative muslim like they come from a very conservative family conservative muslim single woman like hmm. if you club these together it's a deadly combination where you know people are going to judge you left right and center but um, the only good thing that i would say um, that uh, you know has uh, really helped is uh, my father my father was uh, you know raised by a single woman so he lost his father when he was 3 years old so mm. he knew that women were stronger and my dadi used to work at that time so uh, you know this has come down Uh, from you know the family and uh, my i don't have a brother i had a brother he actually expired so it was always like you know he he never treated me like you know there was no gender inequality so he hmm. said he in fact he was stricter like if i used to use the ac he used to make me pay the bill <laughs> so it's like if you're using it you need to know that you know these things are not for free you know uh, you have to earn it and because he was this strict disciplinarian you know behind i think uh, yeah i mean like he, he was a driving force my mom was a little you know like kya business karna hai you already had a job and you know she was you know there but you know when i used to study there used to be a coffee mug on the table so i knew that you know there is uh, there is something called as um, uh, complimentary support like not active support like piche ka support hai so parents were there they were the driving force my sister was there my sister is uh, an amazing amazing uh, woman so she used to tell me kar le yaar you you'll be able to do it so and my friends oh my god i have like really really good friends 
so there was a big good support system which helped me fight the you know all the backlashes that i got uh, throughout throughout uh, people called me crazy they called me uh, like she's gone crazy you know, i used to sit in right thesis and i used to sit in right uh, case studies and i used to sit and you know study so much and like ab kya doctor banegi and you know mm. uh, <laughs> so uh, there was a support system which helped me fight it of course and i'm a very stubborn person like that so i i also believe yeah, kar lungi yaar and um, also 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 the fact that um, i i had this uh, my father once just told me that you know uh, even though i am not funding you mm-hmm. uh, this is something that you're doing on your own but uh, believe me when you fall i will be there so don't feel so dejected when when you fail so there was a time when i had to close down everything and come back home and he said that you, know, you are a writer you start writing and uh, i'll give you pocket money so <laughs> <laughs> so you know that is there yeah that is there i can you know, i'll just well up you know with those words solely so you know that there is a support system you don't want to fail but you know that you know uh, you can you know rise above and you know you uh, I've, i've actually burned a lot i have become ashes and then from the ashes i have risen risen again so yeah yeah but that's so nice of your dad because you know he's almost said this he basically said you stand on your own and if you fall down i am there to hold you so that that's that's what i really get out of it so so nice of uh, him so name uh, you know couple of friends who were really there motivating you uh, in this entire journey so uh, there's this friend of mine called as hitesh uh, actually uh, i call him shetty because uh, he uh, it, it's just that you know the shetty is always called shetty so i'll be preferring to call him shetty so his name is hitesh shetty so shetty was the kind of a friend who was like the he also helped me monetarily a little at the start so uh, he was there when you know i told him that you know i'm planning this and hmm. uh, he didn't say oh uh, you know this is stupid yeah you know why are you leaving mastech you have such a wonderful job and you can grow uh, so well out here i mean mastech is a really good company and i would definitely put in mastech was the best choice of my life it was an amazing company uh, the values that they instilled you know as the founders the founders of mastech Mm. amazing amazing people it did you know they developed me as an individual like you know i wanted to be an entrepreneur and i wanted to set up a company exactly like that instilling those values you know so they always call once a master care always a master care so uh, you know talking about your baby company that was my baby company uh, after mm. i just graduated i got into that so from there i got shetty shetty was a friend that i uh, got from master like you have such a wonderful job you know uh, why 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 don't you what You, you could grow so instead of seeing that he was like ha ha i believe in you you are like multi talented kuch bhi kar sakti hai so <laughs> so uh, to be there you know belaza b e l e z z a right now i had actually initially made it belaza with just one z i didn't get the name later on when i was getting it registered so i had to put a double z so it has my name z e b a n mm-hmm. yes okay so zeba means beauty Beleza means beauty in Portuguese and uh, Italian. It means beauty. So the the name was also conceptualized in my uh, you know in my room where uh, he's good at sketching. So he you know he just drew this and he was like, yeah, Beleza is your company. We'll we'll call it Beleza. When there was nothing, I was a mere uh, like twenty one year old, twenty two year old. So uh, from there you know the journey started so hitesh hati is one person who's been like instrumental and he's been there you know he's been always there uh, when i needed support till i could you know manage to get a grip on my own uh, i knew that you know even he's going to bail me out if there is something like a problem or something I initially thoda bahut loan bhi diya tha paise ka so yeah <laughs> and uh, the other friend of mine is of course uh, i have a best friend called as zeba so we have the same name and oh. uh, we call us as zeba square so she was there like you know she was she was there as a huge emotional support so to always say yaar you are talented yeah you'll be able to do it uh, you know that kind of reinforcement when you get from your friends mm, that's good that maybe that is one of the reason your name got rejected in the first go because Zeba Square was supposed to be in your brand name. Exactly. 
<laughs> oh my god this is something that i didn't see uh, yeah definitely ziva square has to be there as that that square because that emotional support of a friend is always more more required and much more required than uh, just a financial support so that's one yes, of exactly. the things asking this you know the the people who support you in the journey of the business you know whether it's successful or not are the real friends jo har dam saath mein rahe so good har dam saath mein rahe so yeah next question so you you started this uh, aromatherapy so what was the weirdest thing people asked okay what was the weirdest <laughs> i have another question from that <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll be. Uh, yeah, must have tried. Yeah, I know. I I mean, like, who is viewing this? <laughs> I hope uh, not children. So uh, the thing is that uh, you know, um, aroma therapy uh, is actually associated with. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people think that it is just massage therapy. So I have had very creepy people telling me, uh, "I'll give you any amount of money, do my massage," <laughs> and I'm like. there is no massage therapies like i have I, there is no massage parlor that i have set you know i am doing a clinical practice of aroma therapy i am making medicines to help cure you you know if you want a massaging oil i will make one and give it to you you get it done by a masseuse and it was obviously not in a very good way you know the way they were asking so uh, it, initially i used to feel very uh, this like you know i also make uh, you know certain products which are you know for um, no breast enhancement and mm-hmm. only breast enhancement i don't do anything else apart from that so yes i got a lot of queries you know regarding that also especially from uh, the other side which is not in a very good uh, you know uh, context yes, but yeah i mean yes like uh, being into a medical profession you tend to take in every inquiry that comes to you because it could be genuine but uh, i have realized that being a you know young female doctor that has uh, Uh, you know played against me also in quite some times you know like mm. uh, some some sometimes uh, some sometimes uh, it hasn't been pleasant it's even for my team sometimes on the phone and on the queries like uh, sometimes you know my clinic numbers are out so mm. uh, you know people will keep texting you people will keep uh, you know uh, you know come on a date like give a come for a coffee i'm like oh, i'm trying to do business here so there is always this section so yeah th- this is these are weird weird things that i get faced even now but uh, now i've got started no, you know, know. Like, okay you know. i i know the block option it's like okay this this is a creep block <laughs> block i told my team also i'm like if you are uncomfortable with the client please block block yeah don't so, answer so uh, yeah please, yeah don't answer don't answer so i have like uh, i i definitely uh, did not do it very consciously but uh, i have a team of females so i believe in empowering females and mm. uh, so all 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 my uh, like my dietitians are females my receptionist is a female my account handling person is a female so it's like i try to give employment to uh, as many females as i can i try to fund education uh, of uh, females like that is something that is very close to my heart so i i do that yeah and i i like doing that yeah but this is a very good point because uh, ziba what happens is most of the women do not get into the business because they have the fear of getting exposed their numbers being exposed koi hoga jo message karega and that particular fear uh, basically is the main major hurdle for you know stopping you know coming out and doing something koi koi text karega koi uh, social media mein message karega and all that um but i think eventually women have to cross that clear thing barrier and say that yeah karne do i mean you cannot change people but you always have an option of blocking it and still continuing with your passion of doing business and you know do what you want to fulfill so that that's a very good point i mean that's a good message which should you know spread across saying that yeah chichore rahenge but you you should know how to manage it you will have to because uh, if you are not fighting against that then uh, i mean like you will never grow because there will be people who will want to put you down there will be people who will try to you know harass you but you have to be strong so yes of course you know you have to be very very strong so when you enter into the entrepreneurial aspect of it like i don't know how many people must have actually told you this but uh, you need to be very strong mentally because uh, you know uh, you you get faced with a lot of challenges which are you know never put on paper never you know discussed 
and uh, never you you'll get these kind of people everywhere every aspect of your life sometimes the clients also so you have to be very very careful you have to be very sweet you have to be very uh, you know you you need to know how to get out of it and you should be very stern also yeah so so it, it is it is a difficult uh, you know it, it is a difficult uh, job actually but eventually that uh, block option definitely works and um, of course and also one more thing that i would definitely want to put it on the platform every person uh, mm-hmm. the police is really 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 helpful when you know things uh, you know if, if things go out of hand of course because i am at a you know at a position where you know my numbers are exposed to a lot of people so uh, there there was a time i would definitely want to put this across there was a time when i had a a uh, stalker like somebody who was stalking me allegedly calling me up and telling me my location mm-hmm. like i know you are here i know you are there and uh, it was it was disturbing at first and uh, like like every average female who is very busy i tried to ignore it but then the uh, stalking got to another level and i had to file an fir and believe me i didn't do anything i just went to the uh, twitter handle of the commissioner of police and i just put it there was a team who actually came to my house actually and uh, they, they didn't you know they were so sweet and they were so prompt in taking action within a week that person was caught and uh, everything they, they did not tell me to come to the you know police station also again they they, they knew that i i had a you know very hectic schedule and everything and believe me they were so sweet they were so cooperative and they really helped me out so for every female who thinks that you know approaching the police is not a good option believe me uh, you know it's not as harrowing or it's not as bad as you think it is and i've had like amazing amazing experience with the mumbai police and the mumbai police has been really 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 helpful uh, when when it came to these matters so ye sab aapko thoda si hurdle karna padega if you are a woman and you are into the entrepreneurial aspect of it but uh, there, there is uh, no give up you have to fight this you will have to fight this like so we have some common fight karu and yeah. that is this is woman empowerment this is woman empowerment this is where it is where you tell that you know i am strong i'm going to stand there and i'm going to fight it out Okay, we have some compliments also flowing in. Uh, Firdaus uh, Zaidi, uh, she is uh, complimenting you that you're you're spreading positivity, uh, you know. And uh, we also have Sudha Mai. Uh, she is uh, complimenting that uh, she agrees with you. The numbers are generally hacked, and it's a big headache for women entrepreneurs. And uh, good and valid point. So uh, now, in these issues, whom do you contact? Ye kaun sa dost hai jo you you are family member who would you uh, take suggestions from in situations like this that you have to like somebody is harassing you and koi to hoga na dear comrade the bhumi ke tarah jo banda aapke sath so always not not to fight jo pata hai see uh, when i am actually troubled of course i do have a support system i actually talk to my dad so uh, my dad has always been there and there is no hidden thing like you know i i don't get scared like you know um, like my approaching. father is going to yeah approaching uh, my father will get very he's, he's like you know these are some battles again he said fight it so um a little sometimes as a father he gets a little you know uh, scared about you know ki kabhi safety or ki ka koi problem na ho jaye but uh, uh, he's like no it is your battle and you need to figure out how to fight it there so uh, believe me i trained myself you know i trained myself in mma i uh, did uh, certain strength training courses i uh, definitely do zumba i try to keep myself fit ki i don't want anybody to come and fight and protect me i think every female should learn that should should try to protect themselves okay things go out of hand there is a police but there is police there are services there are things like that but jitna ho sake make yourself strong like make yourself a mardani like i'm like a total you know pro pro this this is women empowerment this is where you need to you know step in there is no knight in shining armor who is going to come and you know is going to rescue you from hmm. uh, you know situation so don't so wait usually for somebody to impart women empowerment but it's basically you know it's you you have to inculcate that that's the message you giving 
yes of course you need to make yourself strong you need to train yourself you need to fight your own battles and of course if you need discussions please uh, i was very lucky because of course i had my friends also like you know zeba was one person i used to talk to i used to talk to shetty also like you know uh, you know this happened and that happened you know this was there and uh, there were other friends also along like uh, i mean they were friends like they were not like so close that why i keep telling them because these were my really close buddies and my father and there was my cousin brother also who is there he's a younger brother of mine so i used to like you know generally tell him you know these are some problems one or two times he gave a call also is like you know i will teach him a lesson i think no 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 don't fight it out for me but uh, it just feels nice you know because you have to fight your own what battles but when there is a support system it becomes a little easier now now let's get back to your school days you know how, how was uh, ziba during childhood and you know during the school days oh i was a notorious child like i was uh, i was a tomboy so i was uh, i i studied in mary macleod girls high school so i was a tomboy in a girls school and uh, i had my neighbor whose uh, name is actually uh, suhail so he's my chaddi buddy like i grew up with him uh, same age and uh, i i i forgot in that process that you know i'm a girl <laughs> so i used to climb trees i used to uh, dance on the terrace i i i was i was a free spirit like a free 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 spirit and i believed uh, and also uh, there is something that i would like i don't know maybe um, people who want to know about me so yeah. i lost my brother when i was 4 years old so i saw him uh, fall from the third floor like Oh. from the grill yeah so uh, i was 4 years old back then and he was uh, 13 or uh, 14 he's 10 years older to me so uh, i mean like uh, so my my parents were actually my mother actually was uh, parents actually both of them were kind of depressed for a very very long period of time mm. but um, uh, so uh, growing up uh, you know i didn't have a television in the house because it used to remind my mother of him watching the tv and she used to not like it so the television was removed so my dad you know so that you know we have some entertainment option we have a 380 we, that time they got a 386 computer with big big floppies and all that you know yeah. and we i used to play games so i got adept with technology very fast so i could play games i could you know we used to play pinball solitaire and you know all these the prince of persia uh, dangerous <laughs> dave you know all these games you know I, i i i used to play them i was a nerd i i'm into video games even right now so mm-hmm. uh, yeah so the childhood was like i was a nerd i used to read a lot of course because there was no television so i used to have these stacks of books that my father used to get for me so from comics comics ranging from chacha choudhary tau ji uh, you know i i don't know blabu motu patlu all these all the comics that are there including archies and batman superman uh, everything like i was I, i'm actually a, a you know marvel fan Mm-hmm. but uh, i i read all the dc comics also so uh, i will i will like that that was my childhood reading a lot of books and my father was an international level scrabble player so i for your i was like around 4 4 5 years old where he introduced this game amazing game like i would definitely want to tell people you know you should play scrabble and there are scrabble tournaments held in india ha huh, at a very good level so you can actually go to indianscrabble.com and get yourself registered people who want to play professionally and there's a good group of people you know who are doing that they're playing so well so i i i uh, you know i was the one uh, who was very interested in vocabulary I used to play with the oxford dictionary so growing up i was into scrabble i was into video games i was into books i'm a voracious reader i was a voracious reader i'm still a voracious reader so therefore you know studying so much became it came become very common for me because the reading speed the more your reading speed the better uh, the more you can cover up while you're studying so and of course and then i w- i was never into outdoor sports that way like never too good at it but i used to play everything so you used to have those uh, comic books and those uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, collection of uh, you know the floppy disks and stuff like My, that reading gadgets floppies i have yeah i floppies i i still have uh, like uh, and uh, i'm so obsessed with it that i i actually downloaded the uh, in dangerous dave and aladdin uh, on the docs <laughs> box for my nephew i said like, play these games <laughs> really no i don't like them 
<laughs> is a five year old but uh, yes i do have uh, a collection of my cds and floppies and uh, i do have archie's comics books also because i couldn't throw them away the rest uh, my mother tried to this you know i had a i had a full cupboard full of books so eventually my mother threw it away like gave it away in raddi but hai kuch books abhi bhi hai like i've i've just kept it for myself i used to read a lot of tinkle also <laughs> so that that was childhood but ye college time mein kya tha what was the weirdest thing you've done and you know how was your college life my college life was amazing actually i was the lead singer in my college band so i i was obviously quite popular and <laughs> and uh, i i the weirdest thing that i did was uh, learn trying to you know, like drive uh, like my ride a bike uh, sorry bike bike my my friend had a bike in front of the vice chancellor's bungalow and the guard coming and telling me call the department sir and running from there <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know i was notorious i was about to get suspended like two or three times uh, in college for the notorious activities that i had done like uh, there was a like that when you try you know suspension ke orders lage hue hain parents ko bulaya hua hai ki you know you you know you tumhari beti ko tc de denge ya suspend kar denge Yeah, my father, my my father, he got called to college a couple of times. So not really proud of that, but uh, it's 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 there. Like, yeah, I was notorious in college. Okay, so what was the song which public? I mean, your your friends always used to ask for you to sing. So they used to call me uh, Indian Shakira. Indian Shakira, okay. <laughs> Indian Shakira. So uh, yeah, so that uh, whenever wherever was my uh, go-to song. It's like Shakira, Shakira. She's like, I, I, actually, I can sing like Shakira. I sound like Shakira. That is what people say. <laughs> so, abhi kaisa lagta hai? Do you still sing? I mean, you or you are just limited to you know bathroom singing or you know just. Yeah, I I do post no. I like uh, I I do post uh, some of my singing. So singing will always like I. I thought I could pursue it, uh, you know, further. Uh, but uh, this, my father was not very comfortable with. He was like, "No, no music as you know a career option." And uh, since I was very good at other things, also I decided, "Okay, okay, music ko career nahi banate, but music is passion." So yes, I still sing. I post my little clips on Instagram and Facebook sometimes. I sometimes people are like, "Acha, she sits and sings in the clinic also." I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I do. I also write songs, so oh, yeah, nice. it, it, it is, yeah. So it is something that it, that will always be there. So you'll find a couple of videos on you know YouTube and all that. You know, if you do Zeba Sultan, so as I mean, it's it's not something that I do it uh, like. हमारे लिए एक एक छोटा सा टुकड़ा पेश किया जाए Zeba जी. Your favorite. Okay. So uh, since I already told you like Shakira, so I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, please. Let's see. Look you were born that far away so we were born my fan of distance lucky that I'm from a foreign land for the lucky fact of your existence baby I will climb the end of sunny to come the fragrance on your body never could imagine there were only too many ways to love somebody la ro la 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 ro la 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 can't you see I'm at your feet whenever Wherever we meant to be together, I'll be there and you'll be near, and that's the deal, my dear. You're over, you're under, and I still laugh and wonder. We can always play by ear, and that's the deal, my dear. <laughs> wow, you exactly sound. No wonder they call you Shakira. You, you absolutely sound like that. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is this, this comes very naturally. So yeah. This is this is like chota pataka, you know, all skills like like infused into you. So, क्या है जो आपने नहीं किया? I mean, let me ask you this question. Oh yeah, so um, I don't do swimming. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I had a phobia with water, so okay. I didn't learn swimming. But uh, yeah, I I love uh, trying new things. I I I I don't know. I think that. Um, you get old and you get uh, you know you get old when you don't learn mm-hmm. so it is a ever learning process you know somebody tells me you good at this i'm like nahi ab to bahut lambi journey baki hai you can if you the day you say i know everything is 
oh game over for you because you can not know everything there will always be one other person who is much better than you much more knowledgeable than you yahan se if i'm doing something in dietetics i'm like oh i can obviously opt for a phd i can you know do more research work i can do so this is a journey so this makes me look forward to like you know more things to come so i always know okay oh i need to do this i need to upgrade myself i need to study more and when you are into this profession now people are asking me literally yesterday i got a call from uh, posia hospital when my friend uh, who is a doctor was like kuch banaya kya medicine for uh, you know for covid 19 are you working on it you know are you doing it and i yeah, yeah so yeah so i was like uh, yeah actually to be very honest yes i've been making those nasal sprays and everything um mm. the research is of course uh, not too comprehensive but uh, it is helping the people at least around me so i've been giving them these things for steam inhalation uh, immunity is something that you need to work on right so uh, i've been working on the immunity of my clients like i keep telling them ki abhi to immunity ke liye work karo because once the unlocked down happens like you know once things start opening up you are not free of covid covid is going to be there but you will have to build on to your immunity so immunity is something that you need to work on so uh, you know these things you know this is always an ongoing process so uh, you you cannot leave you know so the, I, i've been researching on uh, certain things i've been uh, and abhi kaisa hota hai ki oh now this is something that is new in the market i need to understand how the pathogens are working you know how, will it help will it help clearing out the lungs will because covid ka abhi tak ilaaj to nikla nahi hai so there is no cure for it so you will have to live with it so there is this is an ever learning process so when you are into the medical field you can never say oh i know enough or i can stop here no you can never stop anywhere you There's will have to always be, yeah there is always going to be more and more and more and more and you will never be able there be more and more research going on there will be more and more people you know doing their level best to uh, you know and get the solutions out so it's an ever learning process so this has been there yeah next question do you, in, in your childhood have you uh, been exposed to putting a chewing gum under somebody's seat or <laughs> or have, been? Ha- have you been a victim of you know having a chewing gum on you I have been a victim of somebody uh, sticking a chewing gum in my hair, and that has been my neighbor only. So my mother, you know, had to cut my hair from actually a thawa niche ki taraf chip kaya tha usne. So I I got a trimming done, but uh, I have actually uh, yeah, I have been a very notorious child. So वो थोड़ा सी chewing gum देख कर ऐसे desk desk के नीचे desk seat के ऊपर नहीं that is too much. Desk के नीचे लगाया एक आदमी, yeah. especially when used to chew in the class, no worry where to throw, so used to make these little balls and you know stick it under the desk. Done that. I've been a victim of uh, chewing gum, uh, you know, sticking to my hair uh, more than a couple of times. That was something that I don't know used to be fun for some people. Uh, fortunately, nothing on the scalp, so नीचे से cutting हुई है बहुत बारी. So now, now talking about hairs, you know, uh, so you, you've done this for uh, what is that? Tri- trichology. Trichology. Right? Trichology. Oh, okay. So yeah, anything you recommend for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be very honest. <laughs> so, so what really happens is like with uh, you know um, male pattern baldness, you know, it's uh, androgenic alopecia, where you know you kind of lose all your hair. It happens to a lot of males. Uh, there is not much that you can do with this if it is genetic or you lost all the hair follicles in the hair apart from a transplant which i don't do particularly but if your hair follicles are alive then a derma roller session with hijama and you know with the, of course wet cupping and all the therapies involved and i make onion oils i make oils for you know hair growth and everything they help but uh, <laughs> but but with you it's It with you it's transplant. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I don't lie to my patients. So when people ask me, I'm like very genuine opinion. And uh, with hair, it is always dicey. You know, it is always, always like you know, you can always say fifty fifty. It some people it really works really well. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, for some people, you try your level best, and you know the hair follicles are not revived. So you know, no hope. I like this uh, Ziba. The subtle way of saying no. कुछ होप्स नहीं है आपके बाल नहीं हैं. 
you know that that's what the doctor should have subtly tell that you know tumhara kuch nahi ho sakta so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like uh, transplant is one option, but you know, you need a occipital layer of hair for the transplant also to work. So, if your body is working against it, then your transplant also fails. This is something that a lot of people don't say, and they give you finasteride and all these tablets, which are actually not good for you. So, uh, uh, when it comes to hair, hair has no other function apart from beauty. so when anything happens to your body the first uh, nutrition that goes to your hair is cut off by the body itself it's like iski zarurat hi nahi hai because this is actually it does not it is not your heart it is not your kidney it is not performing something which is vital for your living so uh, the nutrition will get cut off from there so a lot of people suffer from hair loss because the only uh, thing that your hair does is like to give you beauty so uh, like you know th- then it becomes a challenge you know because if it is something that your body is working against and to try and treat that underlying problem then uh, rejuvenating you know because after a certain uh, age you know your body does not uh, self repair itself you know like it used to when you were in your 20s or maybe even your early 30s with all the stress combined and everything it is very difficult so all these uh, hair products uh, jo they are shams huh? when they show ke full hair and you know full bal aa gaye ट्रांसप्लांट नहीं किया है ट्रांसप्लांट भी फेल हो जाता है इवन आफ्टर यू गेट योर हेयर यू लूज देम ऑल अगेन हो गया खत्म वहीं से आपका लाइक यू नो यू नॉट गोइंग टू गेट इट लाइक Hello. Oh, testosterone levels and even if you're suppressing with a lot of medications which I do not prescribe. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so uh, even uh, then it does not work so uh, with hair it is you know your age factor your hair follicles uh, what is your body actually doing your genetic composition everything combined dekh kar ke agar hoga to it will give you good result or otherwise yeah <laughs> otherwise there is no it, it's a huge amount of investment these hair clinics take and then you know you eventually land up with nothing So Ziba, do you, do you have customers who will come consult with you and saying, "Madam, paisa, bus is ke liye, itna paisa dena padega," or negotiate, start negotiating with you? Oh so it- yes, yes, definitely. I have had like people uh, bargaining with me, like with the charges and with uh, uh, like you know, uh, also asking me like you know, I'm very upfront, you know, when it comes to anything. Like like you asked me, I am like I will give you. very genuine opinion kuch hoga to hoga nahi hoga to nahi hoga hmm. and uh, there are times when i am not too sure like there are 50 50% chances now if you ask me a written guarantee ke mere baal aayenge 100% do so i cannot give you that because uh, i am not sure myself if uh, you know you're getting a 100% result so i've had people telling me give me guarantee on paper then uh, i've had people you know negotiating what if it doesn't come back will you refund our money i say mera to time jayega na <laughs> but uh, yeah so i've had and people have negotiated people have kept me on pedi goals so like you know we will pay you later and then later. they don't pay <laughs> then my team is like you know pay so i am uh, i'm a person actually who is uh, very uh, very subtle so all my clients become my friends all my clients like they will start uh, you know associating themselves as my friends and i also genuinely like i will genuinely become their friend it's it's not just then you know i will uh, it, it's not just them it mm-hmm. will be like they'll take random opinions also from me i will give them okay hey, my father is also having this i don't charge for all that so sometimes it so happens that it works against you also so sometimes you you just cannot tell them okay like you know you have to pay yeah <laughs> so i i'm very subtle there yeah sometimes i'm not very uh, like I'm not made of like you know something that like shrewd business woman. I'm not a shrewd business woman. I'm very soft that way. So when it comes to money matters and everything, I have a team who does that. So I just forwarded it like you all do it because of course I have to run clinics and I am not a big shot or something you know having a lot of capital investments behind or something like that. So it's like self. I own. I pay the rent. I have a staff. I have a lot of things. So MSMEs like us are very uh, you know difficult to form to sustain also. So even though you want to genuinely do a lot of good to the people, I will have to unfortunately charge you for it, <laughs> or else how am I going to pay my staff? <laughs> so yeah, this is the conflict you know that goes on in the mind of people. 
So talk about uh, the community service aspect of it. You you were talking uh, earlier in the interview about uh, educating a girl child. So, so uh, yeah, uh, as, uh, the NGO angle of Ziba. So yeah, I, I a lot of people know this about me. A lot of people don't know about me. I don't propagate this, but uh, so I uh, have um, I'm a guardian to a child. Uh, so this started with Mastech. the mastic and mastic foundation where mm. uh, it it so happened that uh, I, i again because i'm very friendly i was very friendly with the housekeeping staff so there was one lady there who expired so housekeeping is a third party service they are not employees of mastic but you uh, they are hired from a third party so her she died of aids so uh, there was a lot of stigma attached uh, to you know okay, okay she had aids and you know she uh, died of it uh, and uh, because of that you know uh, the child uh, that she had she had left behind so the father was already dead prior to that because of the same illness and she had contracted and you know because and was unaware about it for a long period of time and then eventually she also expired so there was this uh, you know seven year old uh, child that uh, you know she had left behind and uh, she had a mother who was blind oh. so this was something that i i just couldn't you know take it i was young actually uh, just joined kiya tha mastic thoda time hua tha so i went i wanted to check it out like you know what i could do so i went there and i saw that you know that the child uh, was you know very the the conditions were very bad and they did not have uh, enough money to you know cremate the body so it was done in the hospital itself so it it was a very deplorable condition and the aji uski um, like you know grandmother thi she was also blind so i was like i have to do something about it you know so initially to i helped on my own account like you know i got them food and hmm and i was like food is not something called as you know i cannot sustain them for life i cannot do that right so i decided that i have to do something for the child so i took help from mastech and they were very prompt in you know helping me out even though i was at the junior most position so that is the reason i love mastech so uh, you know the mastech foundation came into picture and you know we got uh, the certificates all done and everything and we shifted him to the ngo uh, the child uh, his name is molly i call him molly his name is gyaneshwar so uh, he he just got very attached to me and there was nobody to sign as a guardian so i was like acha theek hai main guardian ban jati hu so i i just became a guardian and then i was uh, jab guardian bani tha i got this responsibility that i have to make sure that this child is you know getting everything so uh, yeah i mean like uh, he i'm still in touch he's now grown up he's a ninth standard now and uh, i collected a fund uh, of course so all my friends contributed and everything i made an fd and i kept it for him so to fund his further education so he's my child who's uh, a little grown up now but uh, yeah so that is one thing that that is that is one you know ngo so from there the entire journey started then i realized oh this is not one person who needs help there are a lot more so from one ngo to another then i used to teach in same catherine so uh, i i started uh, teaching like uh, you know for domestically abused women i used to uh, teach them english then i started teaching in municipal schools uh, for free like i passionate about nahi nahi meko women ko zyada karna hai so uh, there is this concept of uh, zakah in islam uh, mm. so you have to remove 2.5% of everything you own uh, every year so i decided to my father like you know what we'll do is we'll fund education in this like instead of giving you know little 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 money to a lot of people let's take somebody kisi ka daitva like let's let's do it on a scale jitne ho sakta hai because we are not very rich people so uh, i was like jitna ho sakta hai so my sister Uh, me my father everybody does the same thing so we collect the money and we fund education so of course mera ek special chalta hai aur uh, in logo ka bhi like you know we uh, fund education of uh, you know female that's it only matlab unki school ki fees puri aur ki bharte hain hum log and uh, for multiple people we do that and that is one part where i believe ki you know this is somewhere you can as an individual you cannot change the entire you know world but you can change a lot around you and then uh, for female employment of course i try to uh, be there as like a hire karo and you know give them the platform to work to you know uh, make and i also give them ye jo special session chal raha hai ye hamesha chalta rehta i'll be like work harder like be there do something of your own and i i like uh, seeing the transformation where you know they start believing in themselves and you know doing all of that so this is one part i do i still teach uh, like uh, ye ye chalta hi rehta this is this is just a part of me 
आई हैव एक्टिवली बहुत अभी एन जी ओज नहीं जाती बट मेरा एक सपना है दैट यू नो बिलेजा ग्रोस बिग डेज गोट बी यूज सी आर सार सेक्शन वेर वील बी डूइंग अ लॉट फॉर फीमेल सेफ्टी एंड फीमेल एजुकेशन वेरी क्लोज टू माई हार्ट लाइक आई रियली बिलीव लाइक यू नो दैट शुड बी मोर पीपल लाइक मी टू चेंज द सिनारी And if a lot of people are like me, you know, even if you can change four or five lives around you, it will matter a lot. Like, more zada hoga. So, so we have compliments yeah, coming. Yeah, this is something that I know. So, Vijay Durga, uh, she is also a Rotarian woman uh, entrepreneur who started at the age of twelve, and now uh, she is complimenting you. Yeah, why? Uh, wow, child must be very lucky. So that's the. compliment from uh, vijay darga she was also one of the initial participants in this particular show so thank you vijay darga garu so that completes the the rapid fire I mean, good good knowing you ziba uh, so now the final question so mm-hmm. you become the chief minister what are the areas we would focus on <laughs> so i'm um... <laughs> No, no. Yeah, I have this, you know, uh, thing that. So I, I also prepared for IAS once upon a time. So yeah, very passionate. I'm mean, yeah, yeah. So I'm very passionate. That is the reason I asked you a simple question. Kya nahi kiya. So I think swimming is the only thing which got spared. I, I think you explored everything. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, like um, when it comes to uh, being a chief minister, of course, you know, this is something that I've actually thought about uh, for not for a brief period of time, like. you know i just keep my fingers crossed inshallah and if i do get into politics i do think i might but not too sure about it i'm very soft for politics but um, i i believe in uh, you know like i told you i used to teach in municipal schools hmm. what i noticed is like 6th and 7th standard tak ke bhi like you know these people are you know the children in 6th and 7th grade do not know abc do they cannot form simple 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 sentences they make mistakes in a b c d a b c d so i ask their examinations so a lot of children used to only come for the mid day meal that was provided to them you know khana mil jata hai so they used to come and they used to you know uh, participate in the school activity so that really broke my heart mujhe aisa lagta hai i i personally feel that um, the education out here especially in government uh, aided schools and everything is is not uh, to the t private schools to still like you know if i'm talking about mary maclet or you know the schools that i've come from and private institutions the children that my sisters uh, kids are going into uh, they manage and we as uh, people you know they we we make sure that you know they are getting proper education but government aided the entire huge sector the poor sector who goes to vernacular medium schools the level of education is really really poor so from there starts all the problems you are not giving them you know you can't uh, you know uh, give them incentives such as mid day meals and expect like you know things to improve there is a lot of groundwork that needs to be done a lot of groundwork not just so like if i am the cm or like at an individual level i can do nothing but get creating teams creating a youth force of course like teach india i also volunteer for teach india so it's like uh, you know to create a ground force so that they work like bahut bada bahut bade paimane pe like you know to so that you know the education system changes and the most important part of it is the medical system the medical so right now at when this covid 19 breakout is happening and you know uh, this is a pandemic what we have realized is the medical facilities government medical facilities are not good not sufficient are really not good like as a you know there are not enough beds there are not enough staff there are not enough doctors there are not enough facilities there are not enough education there is not enough awareness so there is a lot of ground work that needs to be done on the medical uh, aspects of it also so rather than concentrating on other forms of quality i think there is two types of things that you know every cm every pm everywhere it should you should only concentrate on two things one is education and one is on the medical facilities of a country and there is a lot of thing that can change you know the the problem starts with the medical fees hmm. so if you want to be an mbbs doctor you have to shell out in crores so who is going to become a medical doctor there are so less scholarships available there is so much of corruption of this medical system you know when you are trying to become an mbbs wahan par aap fees maaf karwa do meritorious students are not doing you know not getting into doctorate is because uh, just give me a second huh? just give me a second yeah, yeah, sure. 
yeah so uh, medical uh, doctors are not getting into like you know uh, these things is because uh, there's a, this uh, there's a charge problem i might just run out of battery sorry okay. yeah so i'm uh, i'm really sorry to have this break out here but yeah so uh, like the fees that is there it's so high that uh, it it just uh, destroys the purpose of everything so you don't have enough doctors coming out and uh, there is not enough good training that is there the uh, stipend that is given to people like you know for the interns that is also very low so who's going to work i I'll, i'll just just give you a insight right about it like uh, having a pay cut of uh, 50% for uh, residential medical officers in government uh, you know medical facilities that is at right. this point of time in a pandemic this is not good so like i think uh, you know uh, the the i'm, I'm You're actually cutting off uh, Ziba. Ziba, can you try connect again? Okay, team. I, I think uh, Ziba got disconnected. Maybe then there might be some network issue. But yeah, we're, we're done with uh, you know most of the questions, and you know she was trying to answer uh, the last question. One minute CM where. her focus uh, would be more on education and on healthcare and she was also talking about uh, the pay cuts uh, the healthcare uh, workers are going through right now so yeah good interaction uh, thank you ziva you know i'll definitely you know get in touch and you know thank you again uh, but yeah so good to see that so with that i think we'll have a closing thing uh, thank you guys keep watching keep inspiring and uh, spread the word out take care